Hello everyone, how's it going? My name is Dan the Tutor, on a quest to become the world's greatest tutor. In today's video, we're going to be talking about Kirchhoff's current law, also known as KCL. I'll be covering KVL, the voltage law, in a different video, but today we're going to be talking all about KCL, which is also known as the junction law. And this is dealing with physics problems involving circuits, where you have some T-shaped road in your circuit. Or at least that's usually what it looks like. And let's say hypothetically, I have current I1 pointing this way, current I2 pointing that way, and current I3 pointing that way. The current law says all the currents pointing in to the junction must equal all the currents pointing out of the junction. And so what that looks like here, the current going in is only I1. So I1 equals the two currents going out, I2 and I3. And I'm simply gonna write I2 plus I3, and there's my equation for KCL. Now this alone is not some magical theorem that's gonna answer all your questions for circuits, but it's the building block on how we can find things like currents and eventually voltages. So let's look at a couple example problems today. So here we have some circuit with three resistors, these two in parallel, and let's say I don't give you the voltage of the battery, but instead I'll give you the current through this one ohm resistor, and let's say that's five amps. And my question's gonna be, I want you to find the current going through the three ohm resistor path. And so here's what I do with KCL. Let's call this current here I2, and this current here I3, and this is the junction that we're looking at, that T-shaped portion right there. So the current going in is only the five amps, and then the current going out is gonna be I2 plus I3. They're both pointing away from the junction. Now this alone is not enough because I have two unknown variables, I2 and I3, and I only have one equation right now. So then in combination with this, I'm also gonna use Ohm's law, V equals I times R, to help me solve this circuit. So if I do Ohm's law on the three ohm resistor, then I'm saying voltage three, which I don't know, is equal to current three times three ohms. And of course the problem I just created is I just made a new unknown variable, V3, which means I now need one more equation. And so that's just gonna be Ohm's law for I2. And that would be V2 equals I2 times two for Ohm's law. But again, another problem arises because I just created another unknown variable. And if you've been counting, I now have four unknown variables. And I2 and I3 over here are already counted over here. So four distinct unknown variables, that means I need four equations. Right now I have one, two, three. So where's the fourth equation gonna come from? It's gonna come from the fact that because these two are in parallel, V2 equals V3. And that's always true for parallel. The voltages will be equal to each other. So I just wanna point something out. This KCL was just one step in this system of equations that we're still gonna be solving. But now, looking at this, since V2 equals V3, it means I can set this equation equal to this equation. So in other words, 2I2 equals 3I3. I can either solve for I2 or I3 here. I'll choose I2, divide both sides by two, and I get this. It really doesn't matter if I solve for I2 or I3 here. But now I can plug in this I2 into the I2 right here from KCL, and I get five equals three halves I3 plus another I3. Which remember, I need a common denominator here. If I wanna reduce this, that's gonna be two over two for a total of five halves I3. And then to solve for I3, I just need to multiply both sides by the reciprocal two fifths. And I3, the current I wanted, is gonna be two amps. If I want I2, which honestly I don't really care because that wasn't the question, I could just use the equation five equals I2 plus I3, since I3 is two amps, five equals I2 plus two, so therefore, I2 has to be three amps. And there we go, if I wanted that current. And scrolling back now to the original circuit, 
I do want to tell you that you don't have to do KCL or KVL to solve this. We can just use a combination of Ohm's law and combining resistors, and we don't even need KCL or KVL. But the time when we do need KCL or KVL is when you have a circuit with multiple batteries. So here's the next circuit, two batteries, two resistors. And the question I'm gonna ask is, find the voltage and current through each resistor, the 40 ohm and the 60 ohm. And we're gonna solve it using KCL. So first I wanna take note that there are two junctions here, that one and that one. But since it's kind of connected through the same path, it's gonna make the same equation whether I choose the left one or the right one. And I'll explain what I mean by that in a minute. But I also wanna define my currents. So let's say current I1 is this path at the top. Let's say current two is through the middle path, the battery. And let's say current three goes this way, the other direction around to the other end. Now technically the direction that I choose for the current doesn't matter, it's arbitrary. But what I do wanna tell you is, let's say hypothetically I solve for I3 and eventually I get negative one amp. If you get a negative answer for the current, what it means is that the current actually flows the other way. So instead of this clockwise direction, it would actually be counterclockwise for I3. But again, the initial direction I'm choosing for these currents doesn't matter. And the other thing you'll notice I'm doing, I'm declaring the current not just as like a single part of the circuit, I'm saying it's like this whole kind of loop and it's technically not a loop, it's just wherever the circuit is in series. In other words, if we remember about circuits, parts that are in series are always the same current. So this eight volt battery is gonna have the same current as the 40 ohm resistor, and that's why I'm allowed to do this. So earlier I mentioned it doesn't matter if we choose this left junction or the right junction, and now let me prove it. If I do it for the left junction, I'm saying the current pointing in, which is I3, is equal to the currents pointing out, which is I1 plus I2. If I end up choosing the right junction, the currents going in are I1 plus I2, and those are equal to the current going out, which is I3. So as you can see, it's the same equation. It's gonna be redundant. So I don't care which one I use, I'll just keep the left one. We just need one of those KCL equations. And again, the reason why they came out to the same answer is because these two junctions are basically connected and touching each other. And then now the question is, what will the other equations be to find I1, I2, and I3? Well, it's gonna be Ohm's law. Ohm's law specifically through the resistors. And here's a piece of advice I have for you. This one's gonna be very tough. I am gonna need to define some voltages so let me do that in blue. Let's say the voltage all along here where my blue line touches is zero volts. You have to choose somewhere as the zero, I'll choose here. Next, let's call this voltage in green and everywhere that's connected to the green that's not interrupted by a circuit element. Everywhere in green, I'm gonna call V sub A. And then the only other voltage I'm not accounting for is the voltage right here, which I will be calling VB. And every element in this circuit is going to be related to VA, VB, or the zero volt. Let me give you an example. If I look at the battery in the middle, and that's 12 volts, and let me just write it on its own so it's not so cluttered, I know that VA minus zero has to equal 12. And that's because that's how we deal with batteries. The voltage on the plus side minus the voltage on the negative side equals the voltage of the battery. And this is always gonna be true. So in other words, at the spot VA, we know that's gonna be 12 volts. And so back on my circuit, I'll plug that in, VA equals 12 volts. Now I need to choose another circuit element. I'll choose the 60 ohm resistor. And again, I'll write it on its own so it's not so cluttered. And whenever you have a resistor, I'm just gonna use Ohm's law, where this voltage is always the difference in the voltage. And since I declared the currents going this way to the right, you have to write zero minus 12 equals I1 times R60. So in other words, this voltage always follows the direction of the current 
so 0 minus 12 for this case. And if I solve this, negative 12 equals 60 I1. I1 is going to equal negative 0.2 amps. And like I said earlier, if we get a negative current, it means the current actually is supposed to go the other way. So going back to my picture, if the question gave me the direction of the current like this, I wouldn't question it. I would write negative 0.2 amps because that's the right answer. But since the question didn't tell me I1, I decided I1. I am going to erase it and draw it going the other way. And that is now positive 0.2 amps. So I1 is done. Now we got to find I2 or I3. And there's still two circuit elements we have not used yet, either the battery or the resistor. Doesn't matter which one we choose, we're probably going to need both. I'll choose the battery. So here's a zoomed in picture of just the 8 volt battery. Remember the equation we said for batteries earlier? V positive minus V negative equals the voltage in the battery. So that's going to be V plus side, which is VB, minus V negative side, which is 12, equals V battery, which is 8. Add 12 to both sides. Looks like we have VB. That's 20 volts. And no, I cannot solve for I3 yet because Ohm's law only works for resistors, does not work for batteries. So I can't find the current yet, but at least back in my original picture, at least I can call this 20 volts. And so then the only thing to deal with left is this last resistor, the 40 ohm. Again, I am writing it on its own. It really helps me visualize it. And the equation is going to be Ohm's law V equals I times R, where V Remember, it's from bottom to top here because I'm following the current. It's going to be 20 minus 0 equals current, which I don't know, I3 times resistance, 40. So if I solve for I3, it's going to be 20 divided by 40, which is positive 0.5 amps, which simply means I chose the correct direction for my current I3. So then if I3 is 0.5 amps, it means I have everything I need to answer the question, which remember was find the voltage and the current through each resistor. For 60 ohm, that was 0.2 amps. For the 40 ohm, that's 0.5 amps. And now I just need to find their voltages. And now there's a couple ways I can find these voltages. I'll just use Ohm's law because that's probably the easiest for you to understand. So voltage equals current 0.2 times resistance 60. That's going to be 12 volts for the 60 ohm resistor. And then for the 40 ohm, V equals I times R, voltage equals 0.5 times 40, which is going to be a voltage of 20 volts. And there we have all the currents and all the voltages that we wanted for this circuit, and we're done. And just in case you really wanted to solve for I2, I would have to redo my KCL equation because I changed the direction of I1, remember? So now I1 going in plus I3 also going in to that left node equals the I2 going out. So 0.2 plus 0.5 equals I2. Looks like I2 is going to be 0.7 amps. And we didn't need I2, but in case you wanted it, there you go. And that's all the questions I have to look at today. If you do have any more questions, please post them in the comments. Thank you all for watching. Have a great rest of your day, and I'll see you in the next video. Take care and bye-bye.